description focus on the time and space both together all right that mean uh, as analogies there is a policeman focuses on the uh, one intersection area so how many of car cross the intersection so that is what we call the eulerian description there we focus on the time as well as the space which is the coordinate all right so after we learn about the flow description all right this is what we learn description secondly we must know the classification of fleet flow all right for classification of fleet flow i give you to i give you assignment all right you please read through this uh, classification of fleet flow because this is only the theory all right that explain about the flow classification but i would like to highlight here that uh, in general we have two kind of flow all right we have two phenomena which, which is laminar flow and turbulent flow okay so what is a laminar laminar flow is a smooth flow where you can see the the human being here traveling in a flow direction orderly all right that means it is moving in orderly manner this is what we call lamina as you can see as example for this pipe flow this is smooth flow orderly orderly manner flow however for the turbulent flow it is we call a chaos flow where the traveling disorder at different velocity and different direction this is what we call a turbulent all right so when we talk about lamina and turbulent there is the critical point where from the lamina initially the flow will become the lamina and then it will turn into turbulent all right how to know whether the flow turn into into turbulent it based on the critical Renault number all right so what is the Renault number Renault number is the dimensionless analysis that give you uh, the indicator whether the flow is lamina or turbulent. All right, just simply the Renault number is the indicator that provide you with whether the flow is lamina or turbulent. All right. So for for example, the case of uh, rough wall pipe, if the flow if the flow more than two thousand, it is turbulent. When less than 2000, it is lamina. Very simple. Alright, different kind of geometry. For example, wall, barrel plate, a flat plate will have different kind of critical Renault number. Alright, for today's session, I'm, co I'm going to cover the Bernoulli equation. This is the most important part in fluid mechanics. So after you after you finish the course, you should know what is the Bernoulli. All right. So what is the Bernoulli? Have you ever heard during your primary or second not primary during your secondary school? What is the Bernoulli? Have you ever heard before the Bernoulli? Oh, uh, I heard it in the mat in mathematics, but like not much. I just heard it. Okay, you not much heard it. Anyone? That is good, Najimul. You at least you heard about Bernoulli. Then it can give you the remarks, right? That what is the Bernoulli? Okay, actually Bernoulli is the relationship between the pressure, velocity, and elevation. Very simple, alright. So Bernoulli equation will show you the relationship between pressure, velocity, and elevation. So Bernoulli equation valid for the steady, incompressible flow, and the friction, no negligible friction. So these three uh, criteria, all right, valid for those three cases. All right, steady, that means there is no change of time. All right, the property will not change over time. Incompressible, that means there is no change of. Anyone know what is a com incompressible flow? Uh, it, uh, the, li the liquid can be compressed. 
Okay, I, yes, cannot be compressed. But there are some part of the liquid we call as a compressible. Ha, you must differentiate that. For example, water, we, we have two categories, compressible or incompressible. So, what is actually meant by incompressible? I believe incompressible for your understanding, it cannot be compressed. But in terms of the fluid mechanic, incompressible means there is no change in density. Alright, there is no change in density of the fluid property. That means the density is constant. Okay. The steady means there is no change in time. Time equal to constant. Incompressible, there is no change in there is no change in density constant. Alright, this is friction. There is no friction or there is no roughness. Alright. So, equation typically used in a flow region outside the boundary layer and the wicks. So, what is the boundary layer and the wicks? Okay, let me draw for you the, the case of the aeropoint. Okay, we have the aeropoint section. Okay, this is the aeropoint. And then we have the flow. The flow coming from here. Alright, and then will be deflected here. And then we have another flow from here and then here. Okay, this is the flow streamline because it is streaming in the same direction. Okay, this is the flow. Alright. This is velocity 1 and this is velocity 2. Okay, so when we talk about outside the boundary layer, that means, okay, that means nearest, nearest to this wall, we have the boundary layer. Okay, so that means the equation, for example, we consider point 1, and point 2 cannot be located inside this boundary layer. It should be outside the boundary layer. For example, this point. Alright, point A. Okay, point B. Or point C. Or point D. Alright, and wicks. What is wicks? Wick is the flow weight due to the turbulent flow. When you analyze using a, using a advanced technology, you can see the wicks, all right, like this. The swirler flow, it is a turbulent flow. Okay, it is a wick here. So, that means the Bernoulli equation cannot be applied inside this wick. Cannot be applied inside this wick as well inside this boundary condition. Okay, so far, you guys understand what is the Bernoulli equation, the principle that cannot be applied throughout the region, everyone? You guys clear about this? Um, doctor, can you go over it again once because I didn't quite get it. You don't understand which part? I mean, uh, the exclusion on the diagram because uh, it was lagging, so I didn't quite hear you anything. Okay, okay. Uh, this is aerofoil, alright? You know this is aerofoil and then this is the stream flow, alright? From the wind, okay? And then, uh, nearest to this aerofoil, we consider as the boundary layer. Okay, this is the boundary layer nearest to the aerofoil wall. Alright, and the weight, this is weight. So, the equation typically used outside of this boundary layer. That means the flow, the Bernoulli equation 
can be used at point A, B, C and D but cannot be used at nearest this point, inside this point alright because this point we call as the unstable there is the change of property over time so that means it is unsteady ok, so far clear? yes doctor alright, so acceleration of fluid particle alright, definitely when there is a flow there is the velocity as well as acceleration so the motion of particle and the path it follow described by the velocity vector as a function of time and space alright, remember this is the Eulerian description we have the velocity as a function of time and space which is the coordinate x, y and z alright, with steady flow alright, what is the steady flow? the steady flow means all parameter okay all parameter do not change with time for example the parameter can be velocity can be pressure or temperature all right all the flow for example the velocity will not change over time it is constant Doctor, you wrote do change. Huh? You wrote all parameters do change? Uh, don't. Alright. Okay, sorry. It is a don't change with time. Alright. So, all particles that pass through the same point follow the same path. Alright. So, for example, point here, it will follow the same path here. The same thing path. The velocity vector remains tangent to the point at every point. Okay, the speed of particle is related to the distance by v equal to ds over dt. Alright, this is the normal that we have learned. Alright, velocity is a equal to the change of displacements over time. Okay. So let's uh, show you the flow. What mean by the the flow? For example, we have the stream flow. All right, this is the streamline. Remember what is the streamline? The path of the particle flow. All right, and then this is the particle A will flow the same with particle B, the same path. This is a streamline. All right. And then we have the definitely we have the the displacement from this point to this point we call as the S the change of displacement from this point to this point as well as we have the acceleration all right for this play uh, for this case we call as the acceleration in the streamline direction. Right, we can see AS or we call as a uh, this acceleration in the same direction with S displacement. All right, due to this uh, motion of the streamline, you can see there is the change in direction. All right, from here it changed into this direction. Definitely, we have the centripetal acceleration, or sometimes we call as the normal acceleration. Okay, the normal acceleration is due to the change in direction. The AS is the acceleration due to the change in displacement. Very simple. Remember that the acceleration is the vector quantity. That means the vector is magnitude and direction. So the change of magnitude of the displacement will give you the AS. The change of the direction of the flow will give you AN. Very simple, yeah. Alright, so the acceleration has two parts. Okay, first, acceleration has two parts, as you can see here, A S and A N. Right, so A S we call a streamline. 
right? Streamlined acceleration. Okay, so A N is the normal acceleration. Okay, how to get the normal acceleration? Okay, this is basically the formula. A N is equal to the V squared over R. Alright, the R is the radius of curvature. Alright, so when the question asks how to get the normal acceleration, it is a velocity, velocity in the ds direction, divide with radius of curvature. Okay, so here I would like to highlight a few points again. AS, okay, is due to the change in speed along streamline. Right? How and then AN is due to change in position. Alright, so different uh, when the flow have different position, it will give you different value of AN. Okay, because AN directly relates to the positions. Okay, can you see? Different position will have different value of radius of curvature. So different radius of curvature will give you the different AN. Alright. So, from here, if AN equal to zero, that means the flow, the particle follows a straight line. Alright? So that means why the particle follow the straight, uh, the straight line? Because there is no change in position. So there is only AS. So AN will be equal to zero. Okay? And then Okay, you can put this way dv. Okay, we know already dv. What is a dv? dv is a velocity. When we talk about in terms of Eulerian, it is a function of space and time. Alright, so previously we discussed dv is equal to the partial derivative of v over partial derivative of s multiplied multiply with ds plus partial derivatives of V over partial derivative of T multiply with dv. This is how we show you in terms of space and time. And thus, the acceleration, right, the acceleration will be equal to dv over dt equal to d uh, partial b over ds partial s ds over dt plus okay plus partial derivative of v over partial derivative of t dt over dt cancel become one Okay, so when we talk about the uh, steady flow, okay, that means there is no change over time, alright? So any term over time will be equal to zero. Okay, so the partial derivative of V over partial derivative of time will be equal to zero, right? It is a steady flow. So, 
the a as okay equal to dv over dt equal to partial derivative of b over partial derivative of s multiply with ds over dt okay so and then we simplify ds over dt is equal to velocity so dv over partial derivative of s velocity okay we rearrange V dv over dx. So we can see here that the acceleration in a steady flow steady, steady flow STEA steady flow is due to okay is due to the change in velocity with respect to position okay so can you see the change of velocity with respect to the position so and this is the AS. Okay. Okay. So now let's proceed on the derivation. Derivations of Bernoulli principle. Right. So before we start with the uh, derivation of Bernoulli principle, I would like you to focus on this. This is very important. Okay. So first we start by looking by looking at the uh, Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, for example, we have only two coordinate system, which is x and this is z elevation. And then we have the streamline flow okay, of the fluid particle from here to here okay this is the streamline flow okay so from here this is the particle flow it will follow the same path let's say we uh, consider this point okay this is the the change of this we call as a ds okay the displacement and then we have the force okay for example we have the force we know that force is equal to p multiplied with area so let's say we have the pressure multiplied with the cross-sectional area dea okay the area from here all right and then we have also another uh, force okay this is okay can you see this is pressure when you go to the other side it is actually the pressure in here plus the change of pressure dp right the pressure change from here to here plus pressure initial here multiply with the da okay so we need to apply right Newton second law in S direction okay on the particle moving along along a uh, moving along the streamline all right the streamline 
Okay, so from here we can put this way the summation of force in this direction, yeah. Okay, the summation of force in this direction, in the streamline direction, okay, is a positive. Okay, summation, sorry. Force in the streamline direction is equal to M multiplied with AS. Okay, because of this, let's draw the, this, this part. Okay, this is flow from here to here. This is ds. Okay, this is the change in displacement. Alright, from here to here, this is the change in x. Can you see? The x as this here. From here to here is the change in dz. And this is the angle theta. Alright. So let's try to make a summation of force. Okay. Due to this particle, definitely the particle will have the the width. Alright, from here to here. This is the width. Okay, and then this angle is actually from here. This is the angle. Alright. So, let's make the summation of force. Summation of force. What's the force? Alright. P D A. Right. Okay. P D A. Anyone? Are you there? You guys are uh, still there? Do you have any yes. question? Yes. 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 I'm here. Yes. Okay, so far until this point, you understand the, this free body diagram? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, so the summation of force, okay, you start from here. This is positive, the same direction here. Okay, PDA. And this direction, counter it. Negative, negative. P plus DP. DA. Alright. And then this is the wake. Wake is downward. So let's say we consider this weight to here. It is minus W. And you can see this is theta. So we need to use sine theta. Because we consider the wake in this direction. So it is sine to get here. If you consider this direction, it is cos equal to, you can see mass, acceleration in S, streamer, stream direction. Can you see here? Where is AS? Can you see here? AS is equal to V dV over dS. Just substitute the value, substitute the equation. Okay, so V dv over ds okay try to simplify the equation all right i try to simplify the equation when i try to multiply p with da it will cancel with p da all right so i will have negative all right negative d p da all right so from here I have W sine theta equal to M V D V over D S. Okay. Where from here we can put this way. Alright, we can see the wick. Right before that, this is the mass. Okay, it is difficult to express the mass. Better we express in terms of the volume and density. So we know that the, the mass is equal to density multiplied with the volume. Okay, so density multiplied with the volume of this. Okay, this uh, rectangle. So what's the volume, anyone? 
how to get this volume volume of this uh, rectangle box uh, you guys there how to get the volume of this density or mass i understand what how to calculate the volume here the volume here we have the cross-sectional area here and then we have the ds here how to get the volume oh so the cross-sectional area into ds yes correct so the cross-sectional area multiply with ds we get the volume okay so da multiply with ds Okay, so the weight on the other hand is mass multiplied with gravity. So we just put the gravity here. So we come here, we get rho g dA dS. Okay, and from here we can see that we have we have mass we can replace here. We have weight we have we can replace here. And we have sine. Can you see sine? Can we replace here? Sine. Sine theta yes. equal to sine S O H, which is D D dx. Ds. Okay, now try to substitute the equation. Okay. Negative db. D B D A minus W W is hold this rho G D A D D S sine theta is D Z over D S. Okay, and then equal to mass, which is which is rho. Okay, rho d a d s v d v d s. Okay, what can we simplify further? Can we do simplification d s with d s? Yes, we can simplify here with here. Okay, d s here here. Can we simplify d a, everyone? Can we yes 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 you can see d a d a and d a we can cancel d a so what we have here is actually negative d p minus rho g d z equal to rho v d v okay. From here, this is Doctor. Hello, doctor. I think he has a problem. Leg or what?
Okay, everyone. Are you guys there? Still there? Yes, yes. Okay, uh, I'm so sorry because of the internet connection. Okay, so <laughs> are you guys with me there? Are you guys there? Yes, doctor. Yes. Yes, doctor. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so from here we rearrange this equation. Okay, I try to rearrange a word form. Okay. I rearrange this equation. Okay, uh, I share the screen. Can you see my screen now? Yes, doctor. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now we see. So we rearrange all this equation and we move to the other side. We will got here is uh, dp k plus rho v dv plus rho g dz. The whole is this equation we need to divide with rho. Okay, this is actually equal to zero. Right? Don't forget it. Because we have equal here. Okay, we need to divide all this equation with rho. So, we got here dp over dp pressure over rho plus this is divide with rho left with b dv plus g dz equal to 0. So, next we need to do the integration. Alright, so we do the integration here. What we got here is actually, okay, the pressure over rho plus this one, this in term of B, we integrate B. B will become 1, uh, one plus 1, which is 2 over 2. Okay, and then plus right plus g z and then what we need to add some more anyone do you know after we do this integration uh, no limit what we have to put extra plus c plus a plus c plus a plus plus a plus c plus a plus what we need to add here plus c uh, plus C equal to 0. Okay, so this C we can move to the other side. It will become the pressure over rho plus V squared over 2 plus G Z equal to C. The C, whatever C is negative or positive, still constant. So this is actually the Bernoulli equation along the uh, now, I derive for you the Bernoulli equation along the streamline. Okay. So, when we have two points, let's say point 1 and point 2, we need to establish this as a P1 over rho plus V1 squared over 2 plus g z1 equal to this constant should be the same of this p2 over rho plus v2 squared over 2 plus g z2 this is how we establish when we have two point okay so from here you can see this is actually the flow energy Okay, this is flow energy. Okay, the flow of energy is due to the pressure. Okay, if you learn about the piston in your static or dynamic, you know already the flow energy which is the uh, involved of the pressure. 
this is what we call a kinetic energy and this is the potential energy so the bernoulli principle is actually the combination of kinetic potential energy with the flow energy okay okay uh, we try one example and then we end our session okay so the wind reaches a speed of 144 km per hour this is not SI unit all right this is not SI unit the SI unit is meter per second in a storm calculate the force acting on the window with this dimension facing the storm the window is in the high rise building is a very tall so so the wind speed is not reduced to the ground effect okay use the density of air 1.27 so from here we need to establish two point for example this is point one and this is point okay let's see this is point one at the center here and this is point two okay so by having two point we can apply the bernoulli equation okay so the bernoulli equation what is the bernoulli equation p okay you can say that p over p1 over gamma okay the gamma is the another simplification when you uh, divide this with the gravity this is the gravity p1 over gamma over v1 square over 2g you can see i divide with gravity this also with gravity plus z okay you can see here the gz i divide with gravity on the left this is z okay this is z1 equal to p2 over gamma plus v2 square over 2g plus z2 okay from here we need to establish what is the zero you can see here okay the pressure at point y it is exposed to the atmospheric pressure that means it is equal to zero so p1 okay p1 equal to zero z1 equal to z2 so z1 and z2 we cancel out it is the same elevation and p1 equal to zero okay and you can see at point two what is the velocity when the wind hit the hit the window zero yes it is that the stagnation point so v2 equal to zero so what we left here is pressure at point two why we need to find the pressure because we need to find the force the force is a pressure multiplied with the area so the pressure here is on the left okay v1 squared over 2g multiply with the rho okay so we know already rho is eh, sorry gamma gamma is a rho multiply with the gravity okay so v1 v1 here is it is given b1 is 104 kilometer per hour we need to convert into si unit which is 104 multiply with 1000 divide with 3600 second okay this is the conversion into meter per second you will get 40 meter per second so from here substitute into this equation pressure 2 equal to we need to find the pressure stagnation at point at the point 2 so velocity 1 which is 40 squared okay over 2 multiply with 9.81 multiply with rho which is sorry the gamma which is rho which is 1000 uh, 
So don't confuse. This is the rule of air, not rule of water. So you can see the rule given here is 1.27. The rule of air. So 1.27 multiply with the gravity 9.81. So you will get the pressure around here 1.016 kilopascal. Okay. So from here, you need to find the force acting on the window, which is the force equal to pressure at the window multiplied with the, the area facing the window. The area facing the wind, which is 0 0.9 multiplied with 1.8. Okay, so the pressure is 1.016 kilopascal multiplied with the area 0 0.9 multiplied with 1.8. So you will get here 1.646 kilo newton. Therefore, that is the final answer to get the force acting on the window. Okay, so far you guys have any questions? Sir, why Q1 and Q2 are 0? Q1 equal to 0? Yes, why? Because you can see here at point 1, pressure at point 1 is a PA, PM. When we consider P at PM as the gauge pressure, P at PM equal to P1, which equal to 0. Okay, clear. Normally, the case involves the gauge pressure. Alright? Yes, and what about V2? V2. V2. Okay, why the velocity? Okay, this is the particle, particle moving and suddenly hit the window. What do you think of the particle? Will stop or move? No, it will stop. Okay, will stop. So, the velocity equal to? Zero. Okay. Thank you. Okay, clear about this, yeah? Right. Yes. Okay, that is the example for your understanding. Okay, the next uh, tomorrow, uh, the day after tomorrow, we're going to cover the stagnation, static and dynamic pressure. Okay, I think that's all for today. Uh, for your quiz one, for your assignment one, two, uh, now I'm start to marking your paper as well as your quiz number two. All right, give me time to rectify the problem. Okay. Uh, and anyone else? You have any so, any questions so far before we end session today? Okay, uh, I think that's all for today. And thank you very much for your time. Okay, uh, doctor, I end. Excuse okay. me, doctor. Uh, your scan today didn't work, uh, doctor. Pardon? Uh, your scan. Q? Yeah, your scan about attendance uh, didn't work. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know already. I will uh, issue this problem today. Okay. 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 Uh, thank you. Thank you all. Assalamualaikum. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam.